10 months, in 10 months, prior to the 10 months I was a sinner, I'm, I still don't think I'm perfect yet, but I'm striving for it. Um, it, it all began with, with fear. I didn't, it, I knew God existed, I didn't know who he was. I didn't have a relationship with him because I was just like many of the other people were, were occupied with the world. And um, a sense of fear came over me one night and I woke up and I said, I said, what is this? Why do I feel like I'm going to die if I don't change myself? So I, from there, I began to look for answers. And it just, it hit me. I said, where do I go? Where do I begin? What's gonna happen to me when, when it's all done? So, through a friend, coincidentally, you see God set this up so perfectly. Uh, my landlord happened to be, uh, uh, she, was, she was Christian, but oddly enough, she, convert, she converted to Judaism, which I found weird, that she would refer me to a, a Christian church, but she converted to Judaism. I ended up going to this church, and um, it was a Sunday keeping church. And the more I went, the more I started to see a structure. It was so repetitive. And God called me out of that church because something was wrong. It, was, it just wasn't right. So I ended up going to a fellowship of mine. Uh, I had family who were, who were saved, familiar with the word. I was just seeking, honestly seeking. And I think that's what's missing in a lot of today's youth, maybe adults also, is there's not a, a honest yearning for, for the truth. And um, as I went looking for this, this, um, this truth, uh, I, I got into a lot of disagreements with my fellowship because a lot of the things that they were teaching me, I had the word in front of my face and it just wasn't clicking. I was saying, the things that they're teaching me is not biblical. You know, it's not the word. So, out of anger, they told me that I need more time with God. But in my mind, I said, this is, this is true, but I just don't know how to explain it. I said, God, put the words in my mouth. Let, you know, give me the right words to say that I can go explain it to them. Uh, that night I went home and I had a dream. And it was vivid. Like, I was in the streets, everybody was walking around me, and all of a sudden, dark cloud comes in the sky. Jesus is in the clouds. Everybody is getting taken up with me. So I'm like, I know what the situation is because I, I, I was fixated on the book of Revelation at this time. So I, I would not put that book down until I understood it. So um, as Jesus comes in the crowd and everybody's going up, I'm like, why is everybody going up and I'm not going up? So I started to follow the crowd and all the sheep. And it was a group of little kids. They took me into this this structure, this building, I went in, followed them, and they led me to a dead end. And I was so upset in the dream. I said, what is this? Why do I feel so sad? I turned around in disappointment, and then I felt something to my left, my left shoulder. I turned around, here's Christ on the balcony with his hands wide open, and he's just telling me the, you know, the company. And um, I stood there in shock because I couldn't see his face, but I knew who he was. It was just a bright light. And as I'm standing there in shock, I felt an arm wrap around my shoulder and my feet lifted off the ground. So I eventually ended up going up with the rest of the people. So to me, that was my confirmation that I knew what I was talking about, although I did not know how to explain it. God was telling me, don't worry, you're right. Um, in due time, I will reveal more to you. And um, Saturday came along. At this time, I didn't know no Sabbath truth. 
I didn't even know who the Seven Day Adventists were. And um, I'm working my job. I work. I worked at FedEx as a delivery driver. I've been working there for about ten years. So I would I would be in charge of all the the new people that come in. I would train them. And this Saturday, I was just. Although I had that confirmation from Christ, I, I still wasn't content. I still needed more truth. So that whole entire Saturday, I'm talking about from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., I'm slamming the steering wheel of my, my FedEx truck. I just want to know the truth. God, I want to know the truth. And this was an extended prayer from the beginning of the day to now. I said, I just want to know the truth. Make this, how is it? that I can have this in front of me and it's not making sense. This person's telling me, oh, this is what this is, and another person's telling me that's what that is. And the day goes by, no answer. That following Tuesday, I come into work. My boss comes to me, hey, Brad, I, I got this, this guy that I want you to train. And I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll train them. I did, this is this is normal. I always train people. He gets into the truck. I, I'm introduced, and I, I I shake his hand, and his name actually is Brother Baji right here. So um, while we're while we're we're, we're com having a conversation, he stops me abruptly and he says, "You know." I've been talking to you for about five minutes and you haven't even said any type of foul language. And I turned to him and I said, that's because I'm a man of God now. And he said, my brother in Christ, I've been saved for seven years. I just came off a ministry for five months from Jamaica. And right there, I just, I started shaking. Cause I said, I, I know what this is. God heard me on Saturday. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, so. I turned around and I looked at Baji and I said, Baji gave me this face like, did I say something wrong? He, he, he didn't know what was, going, what was going on here. He just saw the facial expression of me being in shock. Little did I know, he was on his path himself. He was, he was in need of a job. And God found a way to make us All right. cross paths. And here I am trying to, to find answers, and this guy comes along, and he's quoting scriptures out of the Bible with no Bible in his hand. So I'm looking at this like, no, this is God. So meanwhile, I'm teaching him how to train in FedEx, but I can't even concentrate because I'm in shock that, that this is happening right now. Like, he's going to learn eventually, but just teach me the word. And, and that's what happened. He, and the, the thing that he did that I love the most was you could, you could have somebody read you the word and tell you this is what it is. And it's, it's, you could choose to believe it or you could not. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to say, yeah, yeah, you can have the words in front of you. But the Holy Spirit is going to make you believe what you're reading. That's right. So he, what he would do is I would have a question, he'll point me to the scripture, but I would have to read it on my own and understand it on my own. And that's how the Holy Spirit became, you know, began to convict me to the point where I was sinning so much that within, a, I'd say a four month period of time within that 10 months, I gave up everything that I was doing that was negative. I used to, I made video games at night. I, 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 I watched um, unnecessary stuff on television. I see the deception in it now. I don't, no music, no television. I don't eat no meat. This is all within a four month, the, the Holy Spirit kept convicting me, convicting me. And I know it's real. And, and it's hard to explain to somebody that's not of the faith. That's right. But I know it's real. That, the sense of peace is what I got right. when I found out the truth. A sense of peace. 
and I just felt so rested and I and I kept saying to myself, man, I want to be amongst this 144,000. Hallelujah. It, it, it is, what's, what's the right word? It's, it's a privilege. You're talking about you're being, you're, 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 you're being found with no God. 144,000 translated to never see death. When I read that, I said, man, that's, I, I want to be that. What, what does it take? What does it take? So, whatever, what, whatever was needed to be given up, I'm doing my best to, get, to give it up. All I need is this. That, all I need is the word. And my advice to you is, I, I say this to everyone that I come across, because I might personally not see it, but me being in FedEx for 10 years, I had a relationship with everyone. A lot of people, management, and they seen the change in me. And I have many of my friends that I, I can't even talk to them no more because of the things that we used to talk about. And I, I know that my change has left some type of seed because it, it wasn't just me changing. I spoke the word as much as I could. And, and there's been times where brothers would come up to me and tell me, Yo, Bradley, what happened to you? I went to old Bradley. I said, that guy's dead. <laughs> that guy's dead. He's not coming back. Man. He's not coming back. And um, as I said to, to, to many people who, you know, you could, you could skim through the word. The Bible, the Bible says in John, you know, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was Christ. In the, in, and the word was with God. Christ was with God. Right? And the word was made flesh. God was made flesh. You can't know God by just skimming through the Bible. You have to sit there and build a relationship with him. Dissecting every scripture that you can, line upon line, precept against, uh, upon precept, and the truth will slowly creep its way. Some people manifest faster than others. Ten months and I changed my life. Some people's years, you know. But I know it's truth, and I and I'm convinced that this is this is the time. This is the time now. So there's no games to be played. You're not promised tomorrow. That that's the urgency that that Christ places on all of us. That's right. After death is judgment. Mm -hmm. You 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 judge from what you what you do. Prior to your death. Once you die, that's it. Amen. That's why we have to change now. Mm -hmm. This is why I did not wait. All because right. he, he, he showed me this. Amen. Amen. He showed me this. So, I'm just, every day, I'm grateful he, he's gotten me out of the city. Amen. You know, I, I see the sin there. I see the temptation there. Hmm. He's gotten me out of the city. I'm at peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Um, every day I just wake up just thanking the Lord, like me, why me? Mm -hmm. Why he saved me just before it was too late. Amen. I, I, I know that again. I didn't know, I thought I knew him 10 months earlier. And now I feel like I'm getting to know him because I don't fully know, I don't, I don't fully know him. I'm still building my relationship with him. Um, he, everybody is entitled to, to different gifts within the church. And I'm still trying to find out what mine is in regards to in regards to the church. But whatever it is, I know Christ is going to reveal it to me because through prayer and fasting is how all of my answers were, were, were answered. All of my questions were answered. Amen. You name it. He's, I've, I've seen it. 
my faith is built upon me fasting and praying and seeing the results. I've, I've fasted and prayed and I've seen God answer exactly what I want. I've said, God, if there's any more idols in my life, please, please take it out. Something that I'm not seeing. Sabbath time comes, he repos my car. He goes, he goes, you, you was in that car, you were showing off to everybody. I'm gonna take that away from you. And at first, I got my friends around me, they're looking at me like, why are you not upset? And why are you not mad? Your car just got taken away. I'm over here, so I'm laughing because I know exactly why. I know, I know exactly why. You know, and it's just, they, they, they don't understand. I try to explain, and um, I, I just, for the people that I try to share the truth with, if, if they reject it, I just pray. That's it. It's the only thing I can do. Uh, and again, I'm just, I'm just grateful. Like, this is the truth. Amen. This, this, this message within this church, this is God's remnant church. Amen. I've put hours. You can ask Brother Baji here. Four, three o'clock in the morning, I'm texting this brother, like, pacing around. There was days where I didn't sleep and I had work the next morning because I'm just constantly doing research, pacing back and forth like, this is real. I have to tell somebody. <laughs> this is real. You know? And I'm, God set everything up. The Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath truth, my landlord, my landlord is Christian, she converted to Judaism. You know, they, they, they follow the Sabbath, although it's not the same, God made it easy. So I said, oh, I gotta take a day off of work. I told my boss, I'm, ready, I'm waiting for him to just go all out crazy on me. You know the text message I get back? I'm proud of you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Amen, amen. I hit up my landlord, I lost a day of work. You mind if you could put my rent down a little bit? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. I said, what's going on here? It has to be God. Mm -hmm. And it's just testimonies after testimony. God brought Baji to me to show me the truth. Little bit after that, he starts using me as an instrument. He starts bringing other dry, um, new people who's getting hired within my job who are searching for the truth themselves. And the same thing he did for me, he's using me to do it for the next person coming up. It's, I can't make this stuff up. I can't make it up. And all of this is just, it's a, it's a faith build. So, again, all glory to God. Amen. All glory to God. And, May he continue to use many of us as his instruments to get this truth out. Because it's needed to be done. Because there's, there's honestly, there's no more time left. By, it's by God's grace that we're still here. He's waiting for all of us to perfect our character that he may bring us, like, like Moses brought the... Um, help bring the people into the promised land. We waiting for Christ to bring us into the kingdom. I just want to, I, I just want to get to heaven. We all just want to be in heaven. No more, no more sin, no more death, no more pain. I can, I can only imagine. Just want to be with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Close with prayer. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I ask that my testimony be a witness to your grace and your glory. Amen. We thank you for your son. We thank you for his life, his death, and his resurrection. Amen. We also accept his free gift of eternal life. 
And we ask that he forgives us 